gray and brown gray the color of rocks the color of pavement the color of cement the color of aluminium what else is gray the color of elephants gray and brown for the mud earth the cuter looking pigeons dogs and trees and some rivers brown ah oh, the basics the neutrals they go with everything but do they do they go with each other well we're about to find out so here's what happened i randomly decided i really needed to cake four skeins of yarn in different combinations among themselves i used two grays and two browns the colors really were chosen at random i really needed to combine that yarn into cakes to do a sample i'll put a picture of the sample that i needed to do on screen tell me why i decided to cake four skeins of yarn to do that sample to be fair with myself i did have more sample ideas but i ended up only doing one so i am now left with all of these cakes of yarn and i'm not really sure what to do with them because i don't love this color combo basically even though they're both neutrals brown is a warm tone and gray is a cool tone and usually we don't mix those i mean there's no rules you can do whatever you want but usually i think i don't like to mix them but regardless, I already caked all of the yarn, so I will think of something to do with it. Let's go to the studio and knit something. You carefully look at my yarn shelf. There's no place for brown versus gray yarn. Also, it will fall if I put all these tiny little cakes. Ah! It has been going from place to place for like two weeks now and I just keep moving it but I'm like, I'm not going to put it away, I'm not going to put it away. I would just eventually pack it up in the corner and I would never do anything with it. So I'm doing something with it now. Let me quickly go through our yarn combinations. We have two grays, one brown, two browns, one gray. This is two browns, two grays. Oh, we have three browns as well. So now I will start. Literally no plan. So recently I did make a commission with these yarns and it was a large sweater and I used 130 needles. So I wanna make some a little bit more snatched. 110? 115, let's do 114. I always like to start my projects with the hem. I don't like the rolled edge. This is what um, knitting looks with a rolled edge. Some people like it. it. It's not going to fray or anything, so it's fine. I don't love it. We can always do a little rib, little rib situation. It stretches a bit more. However, ribbing takes time, and I'm not, not going to use too much time. But also because it's thick, I don't want to do a fold over hem. Two, one, two, one, two, one rib. I think that's better. And I think I will start with the brown. When we do these mock ribs in the single bed knitting machine, get another yarn, waist yarn. E wrapping. This is the comb. There you go. So what I will do, I'll get it from the middle, from the UC, and I'll thread the machine as usual. Whee! Okay, and now because I have all of these double needles, I need to catch the first loop and lock it in. There it is, girl. Three. I think I'm gonna go for 15. 15 rolls. I think that's an okay number. Let's go. Oh, I forgot something. One. I forgot two. My row counter. You see it? Go to zero. And that's my dog. She doesn't have a name. You can name her. 
two. These weights, if you've never used a knitting machine, you need them so that the work is tensioned down. Otherwise, it's not going to knit. It just isn't. It needs a little tension. It'll pull downwards. It needs to go back to earth, back to the ground so it works. And you have to be really careful if you're knitting because these fall all the time. And you have to be careful because they're a little, they're a little bit weighted and you don't want them to fall on your feet. Now I will do the infamous manual ribbing. Make my table go up because I can. If you can't, that's okay. I went through that for a couple of years. You just have to ruin your back. And it happens, you know? You choose a new hobby, it's a weird hobby. Things happen. And then you just get the very first stitch, pull over the, the second and a third, and then you will pick it up. By the way, I'm using the latch hook. This is the latch hook. So very soft, number two, kabuki brush. And then you will pick up the stitches one by one. This was supposed to be a vlog. Why am I trying to teach you something? me an hour-ish to finish also I did change outfits I have some options because I have a lot of different color combinations I could do stripes I could do like the front with gray gray brown and then the back brown brown gray and then figure something out for the rest or what I will do is I will I will use my beautiful and harsh carriage the love of my life and I will, oh my God, look at the oil. I will be making a little design. A little bit of oil, cause it's not doing great. So can you see the needles are in knitting position? But for Intarsia, they need to be in this position. This one here. I will grab my little spools of yarn and I have these things secure them with it we have this bit here with brown brown gray here we have brown and here we have brown brown gray again there's just one more design feature that I want to add. So whenever I'm doing just the brown, plain brown, I actually want to make some holes. Let me see if I have a sample. Look at this. This one here. Can you see the little holes? So I will do that by just taking the stitch out of the needle. I'm going to grab them, every other one, and move them to the side. Stitch thing, and I'm just going to move them. I think I'm gonna skip two. So this, this. I lost three stitches right over here. The rows where I am working the little holes on are taking me like five minutes to make. And the other ones are taking me like one. I am eight rolls in and it is 3 p.m. I kind of want to do like a hundred rolls for the body before I, I start shaping the armhole. This lace bit, like it's not going how I imagined it to go. It's time for the holes again. Okay, so this idea of adding the holes to do this lacy bit was not working at all. The stitches kept not knitting so they would fall and it was frustrating me so I decided that I was not going to do the lace bits anymore 
I took the work off of the machine and frogged all of the rolls that I had done after the rib. So I just put the rib back on the machine and went from there working the intarsia without the holes. Also, I had to stop here because I had to go to roller skating class and I actually had to take my sewing machine because some of the costumes for another group were not working out with the roller skates so I offered to help and fix that. So that's why I'm taking my machine to the roller skating. And here I'm back and I'm going to work on the project in silence. It's 11.30. Good morning, the makeup girlies. You can judge me nicely. Give me tips if you have time for it. We're 80 rows in. Oftentimes when I go, I think that way, I think there's something wrong with the carriage and it doesn't properly position the needles. It does do the stitch, but it doesn't position the needles right. Um, also, I'm doing this like geode like situation so it's like almost like a rock and i'm always doing like a plain colors in between the like marbly two colors so i'm going to do 20 more rows and i will start shaping the armholes i have been listening to ballad of songbirds and snakes i'm a big hunger game seller i was in the fandom back in the day the movie's out and everyone's talking about the Hunger Games and I'm like, oh, so many memories. And it's so good. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so good. <sighs> I need to watch the movie. But also the fact that I was audio booking, like I was listening to the book last night was the sole reason why I, like, I hyper focused on it for two and a half hours because I am not really that good. These crickets are really going at it, aren't they? I don't even know it's a cricket. It's not the name. It's a cicada. I'm sorry. Audiobooks are really good for hyper focusing because they're long. You know, the ballad of songbirds and snakes is like 16 hours long in a normal speed. which is what I used throughout most of this. I think I'm going to, here in the middle where there's gray, I'm going to do a few more rows and soon I when I will open it again and use the rest. This is how much I have of brown, brown, gray. Um, and I'll use the rest of it in the beginning of, like until I have to open the neckline, which will be in a few rows. I really do want to finish this front panel before lunch. I'm in roll 150 and this is when I have decided right now that I will start oh my god I lost the stitch I will start um doing my neck hole so this is how the arm hole is looking so far here in the middle I will start so what I'll do is I'll take six stitches from each side so it's not a V neckline I prefer a more oval shaped neckline and then I will gradually gr uh, take off stitches as I grow the like as the rolls come to existence. What else? What else? I'm going to eat. I'm going for lunch right now. Um, I did not finish it before lunch. A 
right. Now I'll cast off. Where are my scissors? Check this out. And I will do what I just did in this side. Um, let's gather here in this mess. This is the front panel of our top. It's really nice. I think it, it's giving like pixelization, glitch kind of vibes. These are our... This is the yarn that we have to make the back. For a moment there, I kind of thought I could make sleeves, but I don't think that's the case. So right now, I'll do the back in the exact same way that I did the front. I've been thinking we have a lot of plain colors. I don't have anything left from this um, brown, brown, gray combination. I have only the gray, gray, brown. And I think I'm going to use the gray, gray, browns as this transition smaller bit and do kind of a similar shape for the back but the opposite the big spaces are going to be the block the only one like the grays and the browns and then the slimmer skinnier ones are going to be the gray gray brown ones you know what this looks like <laughs> i have not read anything beyond the first book and i forgot everything but it reminds me of the shadow hunter um like mortal instrument stuff, doesn't it? Good morning, girls. Let me set the scene, girls. We have 10 rolls in after the, the hem. It's 1 p.m. and I have to leave at 5 to go to my roller skating because I still need to fix the girls' pens. And I have class. Four hours. Actually, I should stop 15 minutes earlier to get ready and make my sandwich. So, 3 hours and 45 minutes to do this. Considering that the front panel took me like roughly 7 hours to do, that's delusional. I'm going to manifest. I will hyper focus on this for this 3 hours and 45 minutes. I will finish this. So, I'll film this time lapse in vertical mode for the talks so go follow me on the talks and on the grams let's go there you go i have a bag i ran over like half an hour but i did finish it which is insane and i'm very light so bye <laughs> Hello, it has been like two months since I last touched our little project. I just ironed it and joined the shoulder seams. And by the way, yeah, I did miscalculate the shoulder and we do have a little bit of a difference in the shoulder sizes. This is what we still have left of the yarn. And the thing about this project is that I want to use all the yarn. Next thing we're doing, the reason why I joined one shoulder only, is a hem here is going to be the neckline. I will do it with the brown only to match the hem in the bottom. This one, the 2-1-2-1 hem. I do still have this three strand brown this is what i'm gonna use and i hope it's enough it's not that much especially because the neckline's um, a big strap i just don't i'm not going to make it too long this was what was left it almost wasn't enough 12 rolls This took me like one hour and a half. I broke one needle. I only noticed it two rows in, so I have a little hole here. I think this will be like not right in the center. It will be right in the middle. It will be like here in almost the center of the neckline. That's great. So the right, right side of the top 
facing the neckline and that will mean that the actual ribbing is going to be the opposite from the bottom so, so the bottom the front side is like two knits one pearl the top here it's going to be two pearls one knit. it's going to be the opposite and i'm not really like uh, pleased about it Let's see how the neckline's looking. Here's the hole that I was talking about. Right in the center. This is the back. This is the front. I will be taking off this blue one. This is a waist tread. I don't know if I like it. I will close it here in the shoulder with the neckline for the side. Oh, how lovely that little seam is that I did with the bottom of the bag and the neck of the front. What is this? What happened? It's not like I wanted to finish it this afternoon, is it? This here, shoulder seam, extra. Ugh, it hurts my soul. Like, do I not know how to count? I want to make um, something for the armholes before I close, because here, are the armholes so here's one armhole and i would just close it here and i will make like a hem like i did in the neckline and on the bottom but i will not be doing the actual ribbing it's just a mock rib i'm not sure if this is enough i have this as well i will try and make it all only on the brown let's hope for the best now i'll actually start directly with the yarn that i'm using so it will just have like a little gap here in between each two needles, but it's very um, even. So it almost looks like a actual rib. This is how it looks. I did decide to do the two colors and that's because the brown ended at exactly row 10. And I was like, I really don't have that much brown. And I'm gonna fold it over so it's gonna be like one side brown and the other side gray. This is how it's looking. I actually don't dislike it. I wanted to make them equal so I didn't have the three strand brown anymore but i luckily do have a skein of the same shade of i think it's the same shade or it's a very similar shade of brown so i just winded the two strand cakes that i had with an extra strand of the yarn that i had and the gray i had enough so i have a little bit i folded it and i am not attaching it right now because one i have to go to a meeting and i have a spinning class so i'll be back later and i will finish this today because i will not spend another day in this top so i will hopefully finish this tonight a little bit later not right now i'll see you in one second i really want to sleep but instead i will finish this Okay guys, so this is kind of it. I will now join it with a invisible stitch on the sides here. Here, and I will leave the waist thread to take it out with you guys tomorrow morning when I will show you the result. Hi, we have a top all woven in, no loose ends on the inside from the intarsia. I did take a couple of hours this morning to finish weaving it in because it does take a little while. Let me take off these awful waist yarns. It's enough that we have a weird color combo. Now adding this blue in it surely doesn't make it better. I will try and pull it in like one go. So this is the first. Okay, here you go. No, it keeps, I want to do like a full thing. Because <clears throat> look, I want to do like a full on. Okay, when I said I'm going to take out the waist yarn, 
with you tomorrow. I really did think that it was going to be a more subtle ASMR aesthetic experience like it usually is, but it was really hard for some reason. But here it is. Let's try it on. <sighs> what do we think? I am going to be honest, I still don't love the color combo. Maybe once I style it in a little bit of a different way, I will start liking it. Um, but I'm glad I used all of the yarn. I think it's a good little top. It's, it's fitting me just fine. I do still have this bit of yarn. I don't think it's enough to do like a full project. I'd have to work it in something else. So, because I really don't know what else to do with this bit, it will be going on the scrap chicken. I do also have all of these blue scraps. So, even more yarn on the scrap kitchen chicken. Um, if you have any scrap yarn project ideas, do let me know because the chicken is overflowing. Let me know what do you think of the top and how would you wear it? I am going to wash this and block it and then I will try and come up with at least 10 outfit ideas wearing this top with the things that I already have in my closet so that I can really put it into my wardrobe and make it, you know, part of my wardrobe. And I will film that in a separate video and post it here in case you're interested. But let me know how would you wear this if you like it. If you don't have a problem at all with the color combo because I've been making a big deal out of not really vibing with this color combo. But maybe it's one of your favorite color combos. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by commenting a gray or a brown heart emoji. If you don't have those, just comment any heart emoji just to let me know that you made it all the way to the end. Let me know if you liked or disliked the top. How would you wear it? Maybe you would have come up with a different way of using these yarn combinations on a top or on a different kind of garment. Let me know if you had an idea like that. If there's anything that you would like to know about the video, um, knitting machine related or I don't know, pattern related, let me know. This will be it. I'll have my social media on the screen. Do consider subscribing to the channel if you can. I do have loads of videos ideas, mostly related to making clothes, knitting clothes, crocheting clothes, and a little bit of some home DIYs that I have to do for a couple of rooms here in the house. So these are some of the things that you could be watching if you subscribe to the channel. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully very, very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>